morning. It's Sunday morning, February 28th. Welcome to Yoga for Big Spirits as we practice Mother Goddess Yoga. And when we begin our practice, the first thing we do is we surrender and we give a little prayer, okay? Because we want to invite in that energy and that spirit um, that moves through us, that God. So we want to invite God into our yoga practice. So we will <clears throat> start with, I just want to get in my, my zone here. Um, I know it's cutting off the top of my head. There, there we go. All right. I want to invite you to join me um, because I want you to see how I move into my pro my practice. Okay. I clear the area. I haven't eaten anything. I have some fruit and some water. I clean my yoga mat, clean the area, because it's nice to do yoga in a clean environment, because you never know when you might end up on the floor breathing stuff from the rug, so. So I'm taking in some breaths, I'm rolling my shoulder. And as I breathe in deeply, I'm bringing in the moment. I'm releasing and letting go everything else that's happened to me, everything else that's going on, and I bring my awareness into this very moment where I am. Immediately my body starts to move. Immediately my body is starting to move. My hand comes up. I'm making the figure eight. And I'm breathing in and I'll ask spirit to come in, enter in, I say, enter in, enter in. It's not just a realization of myself, I can do nothing. It's the realization that God can. And I trust God every time I step in front of this camera. I trust God to take over. <clears throat> and why do I do that? I've come to the realization. It's the realization of, oh, wait a minute. If I had to make this video just Sandra, well, you know, I'm a little upset with this and this happened yesterday and now, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm caught in that, oh, I woke up this morning. As soon as you wake up, you receive consciousness of what's going on in your world, right? And those conscious, those thoughts about what's been happening in the 3D can bring you back into the day thinking the same thoughts and you'll get more of those thoughts again. Um, that day. But when we come into this time, when we do this for ourselves in the morning, I like doing it in the morning. It sets the pace for the day. It's easier to do a bit of stretching just when you get up, right, before breakfast, because then your stomach's empty. Then you can have a little me time, right? So I'm wanting to honor God as the source of this information, this energy that's coming through. Because I can't do it. I, I, I've tried, I've sat here going, come on, turn my camera, turn my camera. And um, unless I surrender, unless I have a little bit of that fruit and I surrender, that just opens me and allows me to hear higher, vibrational truths. So as they come through, I can speak them. So 
uh, I heard as well this morning, it's Sunday. Isn't that a day to worship God? Yeah, maybe we should make our Sunday yoga classes the day we worship God. I was thinking that this morning, that I, because I got a whiteboard and I can't wait to use it with you. And then, um, but I haven't been got it to yet, but we're ready. And then I thought today, well, let's change our yoga videos. So when they watch the videos on Sunday, it's like coming to church. It's like, because I've always wanted to be a minister of God. I always wanted to have my own crew, my own congregation. I always have. Where can I find a church, God? Where where can they, where can they receive me? Should I go to uh, college to get my degree? You know. I'm hearing God ordains His ministers. God ordains His ministers. Now He does that as brings you to them. So now I don't have a church, and we can't visit. We gather there anyway, so but we can gather here, right? We can gather here. We can gather here, just me and you and God, right? We can have a more personal service, one designed just for us, one designed just for us light beings. What do light beings want to hear when they go to church? Let's ask that question. Let's see what sir, what kind of uh, what comes through today. Right? So what do light beings want to hear when they come to church, if they were to go to a church service? Well, if I was a light being checking out a minister, I'd walk in and go, okay, how do I know? I can sit here week after week and listen to this person. How do I know I'm getting the goods? How do I know this person's really worth listening to? I think if, uh, um, I sat down and I listened to them and I heard that they said things like Father, Mother, God. They combined the masculine and feminine. I go, oh, well, this minister knows what's going on, right? Because in the heaven, it's mother, father, God. There's no sex. It's one. It's the one. But we we honor the feminine as much as we honor the masculine, right? So in the new heaven and in the higher dimensions, us light beings want to hear, okay, is this person even like at step one, acknowledging there's no sex, acknowledging there's a light, acknowledging that it's just the one light with both sexes in it? that we honor both sides. The awakened beings that have, that have realized that maybe all the things that we've been told throughout, throughout history aren't correct, and we're here to make sure that it's corrected. Don't you think that? I think the light beings um, here are gonna go and seek out a minister that um, that's one of them. That's one of them that can address the issues they're having, right? Wouldn't you want to listen to a sermon uh, from God if it addressed the issues that you're concerned with, right? So I guess if I was a light being <clears throat> coming to a church service, I'd look for, do they have a candle lit? Has anyone in the room lit a candle? Because we're in the dark down here. God's delight. Honor God by putting on a candle. So in the background here, I've got my candle lit. And when I light it, I light the candle and begin the service. And I say, um, I light the candle and say, may the holy presence of God, his son, Christ Jesus, the spirit of, the Holy Spirit and the spirit of truth, the spirit of the goddess come through. May that spirit come through and fill the room. Be present with me, O Lord. Be present with me. So be present with us. So it's just more than my own personal worship here. I'm including you today. So it's like we, we are becoming one. We are becoming one. And we want to come because we want to listen to God. So a lot of us can hear God. So if you can hear God, you can hear the truth. And if you're a minister and someone's come to check you out and you you start saying a bunch of untruths or spiritual platitudes that you know nothing about like you speak of what you know not you don't know what you're talking about you're just reciting lines and reading this you don't know you don't have the spirit in you and only the spirit can talk to those who are of the spirit right because we're all here to do something. I think we're all here. We've got our purpose to fulfill right now. 
And it's kind of like, um, okay, things are really changing and the new constructs. We're, we're, we're collapsing the systems right now. So we're collapsing religion too. Our concept of it is changing. So how can we change along? How can we, how can we move our churches, our gathering places? Okay, I'm coming forward. My little back really wants to move. Oh, it really wants to move. So we're opening up some stuff in my low back. I thought of just doing this without trying to do it and bring yoga into it. Like I was going to get dresses, black skirt and top and put the white pearls around my neck. Like and you think it, it's like familiar to people because it's like, oh, well, she doesn't have a collar like a priest, but she's got the pearls. She's honoring the black and the white, the yin and the yang. Maybe I'll still do that. Maybe one day that'll come through and we'll do that. But then I thought, if I tried to be straighter than that, straight like that, you know, like, I'm going to be portraying a minister to you, and I'm going to be that old um, figure you're used to looking at, but now I'm going to be here in this time, and I'm going to be, that used to be what we look like, this is what we look like now, right? This is what ministers look like now. So you're going to have... Goddess teachers come forward. Different goddesses with different messages, um, whether it's keeping fit and practicing a program, uh, a learned skill like, I don't know, um, Taekwondo or Qigong or some of these great places. You're, you're a warrior. You're, you're, you're a warrior goddess. I don't know if I'm your girl. <laughs> there's some warrior goddesses I hope will come forward that will show us how to be strong and, and physical and physically it's the Amazons the, I believe the Amazon women uh, and the group of the Amazons women are alive on the planet they just have to come forward and they need a leader those Amazon goddesses they need a leader okay they need someone they can tune into now I'm hearing praise God. Okay, so whatever we're saying, I'm going to stop. I'm going to praise God for a minute, okay? This is what, oh, oh, it's coming through. So I have to go into my heart if I want to praise God, okay? I'm fidgeting with this, but it's warm, so I've got it on still. <laughs> hey, and maybe I'm doing the minister thing, right? Only um, this is, you know, how the clergy stands up, and they have their different scarves on or their different, color side so I'm hearing yeah this is this is like my minister scarf uh, and here I'm it's pink well we're talking about love today the love of God so I would wear a, a, a sign as a minister a new age not new age new dimension new awareness heaven minister heavenly minister if I've been if I've been chosen by God to become a minister God will ordain me and he'll ordain me with truth and his grace. It's up to you to see it. Those of you who are of the higher spirit will be able to resonate with it. So you might say, well, maybe I'll just listen to what's coming through. Love, love, love. The first lesson, I guess, were the first just sermons about love. Love of God, praising God. Um, how do we do that? How do we, how do we really love God and praise God? I think it's a mutual uh, acknowledgement. God's pretty good. Like, God's really good. Um, some of us might get up and just start giving some testimonies. Well, how do you know God's real? And how do you know God's so good? How do you know that? If, you're in, if you've made it and you're awakened and now you're able to access the higher frequencies of love and truth in God, you know, well, let us know what it's like. Tell us what's so great about God. Okay, I'm going to go first. <laughs> I'll give the first testimony for you, okay? I'll give the first testimony for Oh, and it's also good to have a scarf like this, because if you're doing yoga, you can use your scarf to push Paul. Oh, look at that. Coming back, tightening my low back, going forward, going forward. Oh, yeah, let me finish that one story. So I was going to do dressed in black by the board and, and put the pearls on and look very serious as a minister. And then I'm thinking, I can't do that because I can't sit still. Like when I'm speaking and the and grace of God moves through me, uh, 
my body has to move. My body has to be in movement to receive it. And I think there's a lot of, a number of quantum physicists out there and other people, I've heard David Wilcox also mention um, something about time travel, um, moving forward, moving backward. There has to be a movement. There has to be a movement. And you can begin to, to access past and future. Um, we have that ability. We'll get into that another time. Today, what we're doing is we are uh, talking about um, how good God is to you. Okay, I remember that last video I told you when God sent an angel, that was good. I, that was really good. But I just want to go with another instance. There's been a lot that I can testify to the grace of God. Let's just let them in. Okay, I'm going side to side. Here we go, tapping side to side. Tapping side to side. I'm just letting it come to me. How, what's, what, if I were to give a testimony today, um, how great God is, what, what would I say? So much, is so, so much, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess the greatest miracle that uh that that ever happened the greatest gift god gave me um, i was busy collecting signatures for him uh, for the last 13 years of, of the 500 souls that he asked me to collect and uh once i found those 500 souls not even once i found them it was like 178 signatures in uh I got to meet God's son, I really, I got to meet him. That was, that was a miracle. And the relationship that ensued for that entire year where I was responsible for the love, um, God's love to anchor here on the planet and to be the source for his son while he was down here to receive love of God. I was the God source and that he would come to me and I would reflect God to him and he would, I would come to him. No, and he would reflect God for me, yeah. So we became a, a, a God reflection for each other. So to have met Christ, to have known him and loved him uh, in the higher dimensions, uh, what was great about it was my relationship with God intensified. I was able to speak so clearly to God at that time. And no matter how hard my task was of loving somebody who wasn't loving themselves right, didn't know how, did, had never received love, didn't know how to handle it, didn't know how to feel it, didn't know how to do it, and didn't know how to access it. He didn't shut down his love for God. Out of cynicism, he was cynical, couldn't find love anywhere on the planet. And then when we connected and he received the love of God through me, some days it was really hard being that love. Some, I'll tell you, some days, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. It's too hard. It's too difficult. Making me cry, saying things. He's in the multi-dimensional place, exhibiting different personalities, anger outbursts, all these things, selfishness that would come, brokenness, all these sad things, loneliness, wandering searching, uh, emptiness. And then he was able to feel the love of God through another. He was able to feel the love of his father through another. And that person God used was me. And every time I go to God with a complaint, God would say, 
Mm. Just love my son. Don't bellyache and tell me all the reasons why you can't do what I told you to do. Just love my son. I don't care how hard it is. Love him. And then I would say to God, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> it's not easy, but I'll do it. And the only reason I'm doing it, God, is, is because, because I love you. I love you so much. I'll do this for you. Not for him. Not for him. I am not doing it for your son because he is unawakened. He does not walk with God at this time. Oh, what a great stretch. Straightening the left leg, foot forward. My right foot is out to the side. Down I go. Oh, I have a hold on to the base of the foot. If you can't, put your hand here. Oh, and come up. Hey, yeah, so I guess um, if uh, meetings, uh, church, assemblies of people to praise God get together, it won't be in pews. It'll probably be on yoga mats. All right? Because you're going to have to move. You're going to have to move along with me. Because as we... Well, yeah, that's another reason I would go to this church. Because when you are finished coming to a sermon here, your body is sufficiently opened and balanced for you to leave and you're centered. Woo, that's a bonus. When you go to see or hear someone talk about God and how great God is, if you uh, left feeling better, centered, aligned, calm, and in the peace. Yes, this is what this church offers <laughs> to the light beings. It's coming here. And maybe um, when you do a sermon, as I'm sharing with you how good I know God is, it's like Job. It's like even when he took him away from me then, I knew something more was coming. I knew that wasn't the end of the story. I knew, I, I knew the separation was unbearable and, and I did live through it. But I also know that um, he's with me every moment. He's with me every moment. He never leaves. I can talk to him always. What a gift. What a gift that I have that connection with Christ, with Jesus, that I can hear him all the time. He tells me everything. And to be in love with him and to love him. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm absolutely in love with him. And it's never stopped. God placed it in me. God placed that love for his son in me, not me. I didn't, I didn't know Jesus that well. I mean, I did. I, my first moment when I, when I knew about Jesus, all right, where, where were you the first moment you heard about Jesus? Can you remember it? Can you remember how it felt? What was that like for you? Can you just sit for a moment? When did you hear about him or where were you? What did you think? Well, I'll say that um, in these new churches, you can actually talk to people that have had really great experiences. <laughs> Real great testimonies. That was a plug. Straight and simple. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's in me. He comes and speaks through me. I know him intimately. I am one with him. And God gave me that. Uh, when I was collecting signatures and I heard your reward is coming, your reward is coming from people. Um, I was getting messages sent to me from God. And I thought, oh, great, I'll make some money and pay my mortgage off. Oh, there, that's a great reward. That's, oh, boy, God's sure good to me paying off my mortgage. I never realized that the honor he was had in mind for me was so much greater. I, I had no idea what that looked like. And when it came to me, 
I was like, whoa, God, this is incredible. And I acted and had things happen to me in ways that, that, that defied human explanation. So I will say why I love God, because he came to me and took me through a miraculous year. A miraculous year where I have experienced so many acts of the, of the miraculous, so many miracles I witnessed. I want to share them with you. I want to tell you what these miracles are. So stay tuned. Hear more. <laughs> They're good. It's worth it. It's worth to come back. I've always wanted to be a minister because I can talk to God and I can pray to God from my heart and it's real because I know God. And if you know somebody and you're praying and saying a prayer such as, uh, you know, God, you've been so good and let me know you so well. You've given me so many miracles and so much. <sighs> Spiritual awarenesses and, and happenings. You've allowed me to live my life connected to you and you've allowed me to live in miracles in heaven. I've lived the majority of my time here on earth in heaven. And how I can say that, it's because I've always been connected to God. Mm -hmm. God brought his son to me when I was like four and a half. My aunt, we were visiting up in Kitchener, asked my mom if she could take Sandra along to go to church that day because she was teaching Sunday school and my mom said okay you can take her four and a half and of course you know I, I have no recollection of the day but I it, it, like being in the church or whatever happened or how I got there but I have the recollection of sitting at a table my aunt bending over and saying okay you can just draw some pictures and everything I said okay and there was a, a sticker, uh, a sticker on this piece of paper it was the praying hands of, of Jesus. And I said to my aunt, what's that? Because I had no idea what this meant, this, you know, this prayer sign. And my aunt said to me, she said, uh, why those are Jesus' hands? And I said, well, well who's Jesus? Oh, Jesus, he, he loves you. And inside my four and a half little year old brain, I'm going, what? And I just looked at my aunt and I said, he loves me? And my aunt said, oh, yes. Jesus loves you. And I thought, oh, my God. You mean there's a man out there who loves me? There's an actual man who loves me. And for some reason it just hung there. And it, I didn't feel alone anymore. I didn't feel uh, unloved. I knew so, at least somebody loved me. And maybe I didn't feel loved where I was. I'm sure I was, but maybe I wasn't feeling it. And to find out that another man, some other man, Jesus, loved me, I just went, oh my God, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. Wow. Like, I took that news inside of me and I went, yes, I need that. I needed to know that. And I knew from that moment on I was never alone. There was always times when I could communicate with God. 
always. And it was usually a relationship with me and God, me and God, me and God, me and God. And it wasn't until uh, I guess it was when uh, Dr. Brenda Tamini and I realized what the book, the truth about the book, right? The 500 book that we took the same truth. When we realized the truth about that, and that day when I went home was the first day I really. Uh, <laughs> I went home and I was in ecstasy and I sat in my chair and all of a sudden this Jesus that seemed to be so far from me was there and all I wanted to do was have sex with him. And I was so scared of that thought and that feeling and the energy that came over me Exclude, you know, yelling at yourself, don't think that, how can that happen to you? Why would that happen to you? Um, how could you think those thoughts, those shameful thoughts? They were there. I was, I couldn't help it. They were just there. It was just over me, and I felt it. And uh, I just didn't know what to do with it. And then years later, I'd find out exactly why that happened. But to get a message from God here and not understand it to hear, maybe that's what we're to hear today. That's how God works. That's how wonderful God works. Something happens here and the outcome or the meaning isn't disclosed or revealed till later. And when you're in that in-between time, how do you handle that? How do you handle the place between miracles? When nothing's going on, when you're not sure. When something's happened and you're sure something else is going to transpire and it just hasn't happened there yet. I guess that's what when we're in those times of faith, when we must fall back on our past experiences of God, our past knowings of God, where we've seen God elevate us, lift us, take us higher, bring us love in ways we never thought. And remember those times when God's always come through. Because when you're in that place of, I don't know what's going to happen, that's probably the loneliest place. That's the loneliest place when you don't know because you're by yourself and you don't know what's going to happen. And if you go fall into the fear because you don't know what's going to happen, it's like, how are you going to get out of that? And uh, to use the faith you, you have in God, the faith you have in God says, even though I don't know right now, I'm going to trust you do. Even though I don't have the answers right now, God, I'm going to trust you do. Okay, I'm side to side, just making a nice circle in my low back, bringing up that, the wisdom, the energy, the knowledge that I bury, not I, every time I say I, that God's placed in me strategically till this time to serve his purpose. So for such a time as this, for your, because you're, you're meant to know all this, so this is being disclosed to you. Okay, so I've lost my train of thought, so we'll start. I'll wait till I hear what I'm to say. And this can happen, but it's okay. We'll hear again what we're to say. We were talking about the time when you first met Jesus. We were talking about, can you remember that? Can you acknowledge it? Can you see how there's a pattern of Jesus showing up in your life? Someone who loves you. But Jesus is God coming through and loving us through him, through the physical form, being a physical representation on the planet, 
saying, hey, yeah, I'll come and you can use me, Lord, and you can take my life and do whatever you want, no matter what. And so that type of surrender allowed God to work in, in Joshua ben Joseph. Joshua ben Joseph. God, God was able to work so well in him because there was no resistance. So when we are Christ-like, we offer no resistance. We want God to fill us up, offer no resistance. No excuses why I can't, no reasons why I can't show up. Stop pushing him away. There's no reason why God can't show up. What is your reason? But know that there's every reason why I can. God could show up for you today. Oh, Sandra, how do you mean? Okay, I have to go forward bend. Oh, this is so good. Straighten the legs. I'm pushing on, well, not pushing. I'm supporting myself on my knees. Put, straightening my legs. Oh, it's a little too deep. Come up, come up, pull up the top of the head. Stretch that low back. Let it go. Bend your knees. Okay, now you can maybe side to side, straighten the leg. And again, work down. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. That feels good. Oh, oh just opening in the groin. I can probably go a little wider. Opening in the groin. Oh, yeah. So we were talking about Oh yeah, that to receive past, present, future, you'll have to be moving. That's why um, I didn't get dressed up in the black skirt and the black top and <laughs> the pearls and all. Because I couldn't, I knew if the word of God was coming through me today, I wouldn't be able to keep still. I'd be in my heels and skirt and everything going side to side. Because <laughs> you can't keep still. All right sermon today i guess introductions were made um you know who you're dealing with now as the source of the stream that is god certainly not me certainly not me let's praise god for knowing more than we do oh what a relief <laughs> Someone who has all the answers, right? <laughs> okay, that's why I got, I love you, God, because you got all the answers, because when I don't, you do. And even if I don't know the answers, I trust you do have all the answers. Oh, what a reassuring thing that God has all the answers, and we don't have to. Oh, that's how much he loves us. He's, he just keeps that burden off of us. He keeps that burden off of us and he says, don't worry, I got this. Just relax. I got you. I have you. I have you. You don't have to worry. Others can fall around you, but you won't. Because I'm there. I'm the one. I'm your team leader. I'm, I'm God. And I'm watching over you, and I will get to you. I will come to you. I will get word to you. I will move you. I will place you where you are safe always. Always I am there looking after you. Even when you can't understand or you can't know, I'm there. I'm there looking after you. And then when we say, I am afraid, Lord. I'm afraid of so much. What if what I'm doing isn't seen? What if what I'm doing is seen? Am I? Are you proud of me that I'm making this effort to be uh, a vessel for you to speak through and to provide a, a positive direction for those who who to, who tune into this? that I can offer a positive direction here for them to hear truth, for them to hear the real word of God. 
because that's so important. And Father God, will you place in them the knowing that they can trust what they hear? Because place in the knowing in them, Father, that it's you, not me. <sighs> because then the responsibility is off me. And let me move into the joy, Lord. Let me move into the joy of really, like, how much fun is this going to be if God's in charge? So release the outcome. Release what happens. Release what happens wherever you are and watch it happen. Release control of it and watch it happen. Let go of fear and watch it happen. Let go of fear and just watch things happen when you're looking at it and you're not worried that this will happen. You're going, hey, maybe this will happen. Maybe this good thing will happen. I know as you listen, uh, continue to listen, there'll be lots of reasons that come forward why I love God. There's lots of testimony I have to bear of how wonderful God is and the miracles he's worked in me. There's lots for me to share. And in, the, in this forum, I, I, I can't personally sit down with you and hear your journey, but I, maybe when we meet, I can hear your journey. I can hear you share with me what you found, where you've been, how God's worked in your life. I want to hear that. I want to hear how wonderful God, the wonderful things God's done. Oh, man, is that ever great side to side. Okay, as I'm learning doing this, and so if we're having a sermon, I'm learning do not be in a hurry to finish a video or worry about the time. God is going to keep preaching through you until God's done. <laughs> you don't have to worry about how long this video should be because however long it is, we know now it's going to be the perfect time. Oh, just releasing. Oh, I had such a great yoga flow, uh, prep my personal practice after I made that last video. Oh, a little slow letting that go because things came out and I'm going to contact people and s make sure it's okay that I said their name, <laughs> just to be polite. But actually their name wouldn't have come up if it wasn't meant to be shared. So I'll let that go. Okay, we'll close. I'm hearing close. What should we, what will be said? What will God share? What's God's wish for his people? <sighs> I'm hearing, hold my hands up. May the love of God be awakened in you. May you receive conscious awareness that you're already in heaven. Wake up to it. Heaven's here. Wake up that you're already in heaven. And it's peaceful and loving and calm, full of joy and smile and hugs and great conversation. Meeting everyone you thought had died, it's still alive. Because this is heaven and we can all be one in heaven. So heaven and earth come together. All the people that have passed come and you get to meet them again. You just don't know what they look like this lifetime. So that's the game. That's the fun. That's why you never know who you're talking to. Now you have to start finding out who you're talking to. May God bless you with miracles. May God meet you where you are. May God bring that dawn upon to you where you go. Hey, wait a minute. So don't focus on all this stuff over here. What's really happening is heaven is on earth and I can see it. I can start seeing good things happening. I'm, I'm starting to have better thoughts. I'm starting to have more love. I'm starting to see things I never did before. Let us awaken together. 
let us awaken up into that higher conscious knowing where we are one with God, we are one in heaven, and we are already there. So this broadcast is sent to you from heaven. Wow, this broadcast is from heaven. This sermon is from heaven. And I'm still in my body and in able to be witness to the third dimension, but no longer of it, no longer bothered by it, no longer letting it affect me, worry me, cause fear or anything. I'm just moving ahead, moving forward, going, oh, okay. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm focusing on raising my awareness to the fact that there's more more going on than I knew and look at what's really going on and look at this is about awakening as children and you're one of them welcome welcome to this heavenly church of God and may his grace be upon you may God's grace be upon you oh may God's grace enter in oh enter in oh Lord, and may thy grace be upon you. Thank you. Hope you felt that grace.